It's a go. We're going to go. We're going to start doing the podcast. Now. All right. And so, acting. And we'll start doing it, the podcast. And acting. And uh, ready? Three. Uh, let's pretend like we like each other. Two. And you're listening to The Dollop on the All Things Comedy Network. Oh, good one, Dave. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this is an American history podcast where each week I, Dave Anthony, read a story from American history to my friend. A Gareth Reynolds who has no idea what the topic is going to be about. How are you? Normal. Fine. Regular Sunday. Regular Went Sunday? Nothing, yeah. nothing interesting happened to you today? Uh, Nothing went to church, out of the ordinary. Went to church, spoke at church, obviously. Spoke, spoke at church, of course. Spoke, you always sang at church. church. You love a singing at church. Clapped, sang at church. Yep, yep. Uh, yep. After, did a, after church brunch with the pastors. Okay, you know, without pastors, they, they uh, talked life after advice. After that, you. we you work cleaned up. We had to clean the up. church? Yeah, a lot of us just helped us, uh, stuck around, pitched in. That How, why was it so messy? We had a really crazy brunch. We okay. were doing a lot of crazy. So there was, okay. I mean, Waffle Maker that, yeah. that had uh, was shaped like Mickey Mouse. So. Uh-huh. Those were gone. Sure. <laughs> um, so uh, mm. we ran out of batter. Anyway, and then, uh, yeah, after that. Go home? Did you go home? Went home, did Bible study, then went. Watching TV? To, no, I don't believe I watched any TV. I went to the bedroom, mm-hmm. took a nap. Mm-hmm. Um, got up? Got. After the nap? I got up. <laughs> uh, and oh. then. You listened yeah, to the Jesus came Christ here. podcast? Then came here. Uh, nothing in between. Didn't watch anything on TV. No, I don't believe so. Huh. Oh, the Packers game. Oh, oh, watch the Packers game. Yeah, you want to say anything? Oh, about uh, no, just that uh, it uh, was it was a good, good, well game. fought, good game. well fought battle. It's a good game, and Maybe. it was nice to see the Packers pick up. Uh, what seemed like three third downs on the final drive that instead wasn't of what amazing. Mike McCarthy would have done, which would have been hand wow. the ball off three wow. times okay. wow. and leave them with two minutes and ten All seconds right. to go, okay. you know, score and win the game. All right, let's not. This is not the time to bag on Mike McCarthy, who, All right. I, don't, who I don't know at all i don't know him personally he's a friend he's a friend uh and then i watched i watched part of the other game and i saw a guy uh uh do a fake punt when he was up at 24 points on his own 30 yard line and i don't know who that coach is or what he's doing but he shouldn't be in charge of a team <clears throat> whatever <laughs> Uh, so, uh, we have a lot of dates, uh, coming up, uh, 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 for live dollops. Yep. Uh, I did not have, for some reason, the, uh, Detroit show and the Minneapolis show were not up on the webpage. They're up now. Uh, so if you were wondering why that was not a thing, it was cause I'm a dummy. There we go. Uh, That's so, culpability. Uh, so we're going to be in uh, uh, February. We'll be in San Jose, San Francisco. Uh, then we'll be at the Just for Last Vancouver uh, Festival. And then uh, we'll be in Salt Lake City, Denver, Royal Oak, Michigan, Minneapolis, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Seattle, two shows, Portland, two shows. Oh, we added a second show in Salt Lake City. Mm-hmm. Sorry. So now two shows in Salt Lake City. Uh, Houston, Austin, Dallas, Oklahoma City, Nashville, St. Louis, Kansas City, Des Moines, West Palm Beach, Tampa, Orlando, Louisville. Indianapolis. This is a lot of dates. I uh, never wanted to go to Florida, and now with looking at ticket sales, I was right. Were you? Yeah. I have not looked at the ticket sales for that one. Um, I will say I was shocked when you decided we would go, and then mm. look at them. Well, you know I love, I love. You love the Panhandle. Orlando. You love the mostly. Panhandle. The middle part. I Orlando, like Orlando is. I like Orlando and Jacksonville. The rest of it I don't like. That makes sense. Those are the, those are the ones. Uh, I also have some dates, David. Uh, I'll be in Australia uh, it's January fine there. 21st through February 1st. Everything is fine there. Uh, I'll be doing stand up. You can go to my website, GarethReynolds.com, for uh, tickets and all that stuff. I, there's some tickets available for some shows, but not a lot. Uh, so go there. Uh, and then um, some of the money that is uh, made there will be going to help the koalas out. Uh, then February 7th through the 9th, I'll be at the Irvine Improv. February 27th through March 1st, I'll be at Rooster Tea Feathers. Um, and then April 24th through the 26th, the Denver Improv. April 30th through May 3rd, the Pittsburgh Improv. May 28th through the 31st, the Rally Improv. Uh, you can go to my website for those tickets. Some of those tickets might not be up yet, but uh, that just means they haven't been posted, and they will be eventually. So I'm thinking I will donate some money to the Port uh, McCary Koala Hospital is what I'm thinking. God damn, uh, where they're uh, fucking animals. doing 
good stuff with the koalas who are getting fucked up. Yeah, because what's happening there is crazy. Just a billion animals. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so uh, after that great note, <laughs> we're brought to you by Helix Sleep. Uh, so uh, so I sleep I sleep face down. What? Yeah, I'm a face down sleeper. I sleep down. You sleep face down? Well, my face isn't down, but yeah, I sleep on my stomach, yeah. That's okay, but you sleep... No, I don't sleep face, face down, but... Yeah, like, a, mean, like a person who's collapsed? Yeah, I look like someone I got All shot. right, hon, I'm gonna hit it. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> what? Like, Dave? So that's I got a, you. Thank you. Meet me. Oh, then. that's my key. Uh, so I got a brand new mattress. Okay. It's a Helix mattress. Uh, so here's how it works. Uh, you, go to, you go to the Helix website. Uh, you take a quiz. Yeah. Like two minutes. It's not an hour or anything. Uh, and then it matches your body type and sleep preferences. Pick it picks the mattress. Yeah. For you. Right. Uh, so, I like a I like a which, medium mattress. Which really it is getting it's crazy how accurate you no, can be really, about. You can get a lot of shit. Sleep yeah, on. It really is. Uh, yeah. So I got the one that was right for my my face down sleeping. Sure. The shot of the guy gets shot. They were like uh, on the level of like normal to psychotic. Right. Where do you fall? Heavy and psychotic. you're like uh, obviously the psychotic, heavy psychotic. That's right. Uh, so, uh, they've been awarded the number one best overall sleep mattress. It comes in a box. It's the same thing. You open it up. It, it puffs up. You put it on the bed. Yeah. I'm sleeping like a baby now. I'm yeah. literally sleeping like a baby. Yeah. Why? It's because very you're comfortable. swaddled? It's just, it, yeah, it just, it just works. Okay. I don't know what to say. I'm like, you sure. know, it, it takes my weight, gives a little back. You know what I'm talking about. But anyway, it's super comfortable. My wife's super comfortable. Everyone's very happy. With okay. The, with it's just the two of you. Helix then. Lux is what I have. Okay. The Lux. Nice. Yeah, it went big time. Uh, so uh, they're the number one o o overall mattress pick uh, of 2019 by GQ and Wired Magazine. Uh, look, just go to helix.com slash dollop, take the two-minute quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights, risk-free, and leave and pick it up if you do not love it. But you got to put it back in the box, which That's is right. not easy. <laughs> we can do it in pieces. Yeah. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders for our listeners at helix.com slash dollop. That's Helix Sleep. Sorry, I said that wrong. Helix is offering up to $200 off all our mattress orders for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash dollop. That's helixsleep.com slash dollop for up to $200 off. Um, you can't actually cut it up and put it back in. That, that was a joke. Yeah. So don't do that. Don't I know, do that. I don't know how many of you guys are crazy, but we're also brought to you by stamps.com. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys know how I feel about stamps.com. Stamps.com, you know, I don't have to go to the post office anymore. Yeah. I miss Sheila. Uh, we had some good talks. Sure. But it's time to let that go. Right. Uh, more convenience. Uh, stamps.com, you can do anything you do at the post office, right? From your computer, plus stamps.com gives you something you can't get at the post office. Big discounts on postage. Yeah. Uh, it is. It's just it just makes everything super easy. Uh, I, I I weigh everything on the scale they give you. You can buy all the stamps on your computer right there, and then you just put all the put the print it up on your computer, put it on the package. Whoop! Mailman comes. There it goes. There it is. That's it. That's it. It's that easy. That what easy. I just said is that it's that easy. Stamps.com brings all the services to the post office right to your computer, whether you're a small office sending invoices, an online seller shipping out products, or even a warehouse sending thousands of packages a day. Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. With Stamps.com, you get five cents off every first class stamp and up to 40% off priority mail. Not to mention it's a fraction of the cost of those expensive postage meters. It's a no-brainer. Saves you time and money. You know that. Let's do it. Okay. It's no wonder over 700,000 small businesses already use stamps.com. So give yourself a resolution you can actually keep this year. Stop going to the post office and go to stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with our promo code dollop, you can get a special offer that includes a four week trial plus postage, free postage, and a digital scale, no long term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in dollop. That's stamps.com, promo code dollop. Stamps.com and never go to the post office again. There it is. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, we're also brought to you by The Great Courses Plus. Yes. <clears throat> now, uh, I really have, have been enjoying The Great, because I am, I don't know if you know this, but I like history. Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. Same. Both of us have you a do. good grasp of you it. Yeah, you're a huge history guy. Love it. 
Uh, uh, so I've been watching a lot of st- uh, the Great Courses Plus uh, history stuff, which yeah. they have going. They got a bunch of history stuff. They got all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's a streaming service. You have the freedom to learn more about virtually any topic, uh, not just the basics, but you can like t- you can really master a topic, and then you can pretend like you're Smarty Pants at the Smarty Pants party. Which is all you really need. That's right. That's just enough. Go to Smarty Pants parties. That's right. And then and then just spout facts. Yeah. Uh, with the Great Course Plus, there's unlimited access to thousands of lectures on topics like American presidents, the cosmos, travel photography, even Mediterranean cooking, which I'm sure you're all about. Oh, I love it. The Kalamata yeah. Auto mm, Yum. Oil on there. That's olive right. oil. Just a bunch. <laughs> uh, so the one I want to recommend uh, is The Black Death, the world's most devastating plague, which I watched. <laughs> Good Lord. It's great. I'm totally into that kind of stuff. Uh, m- most people, it wasn't great. A lot of people died. But right, I enjoyed it, right. so I think it, I think the Black Death might have been worth it, right? For my for my enjoyment, right? Okay. Uh, so here's something interesting. You want to know something? Sure. The high mortality rate during the Black Death may not have just been from the bubonic plague. Some scientists think anthrax. What? Yeah, anthrax is also kicking it at the same time. Why? Knocking How? Knocking people off. How? Just uh, just double down. It just happened. What? Yeah, it was a double disease situation. Get it's on like board. The bad boys. Yeah. Yeah. So you bring that up at a party and people do what you did. <laughs> yeah. Wait until, <laughs> yeah. Give it, give let, don't come in hot with that fact right away though. Give yourself, warm up, meet the people, right. have a bite, have a nosh. <laughs> That's fair. Get a cocktail. That's kind of stuff you can learn at The Great Courses Plus. Get that awesome feeling of pride that comes with knowledge. Sign up for The Great Courses Plus. They're offering our, our listeners this amazing deal. Three months of unlimited access for just $30. That's only $10 per month. But to get this limited time offer, you must sign up today using our special URL. Get all the details now at thegreatcoursesplus.com slash dollop. That's thegreatcoursesplus.com slash dollop. How'd you know? Because I, I, I'm I noticing a pattern. Yeah. And then we're uh, finally brought to you by Squarespace, yeah. which is a, a, a website uh company that uh they do domains websites uh, all kinds of stuff and yep. uh we use them your personal uh well your business website your comedy website my comedy website our our, our sources podcast website our podcast website where you all can of check our, out our tour dates all everything uh why because we really like squarespace super clean easy to use yep. good analytics right you yes. get your analytics i'm always studying them <laughs> once i get them out of the printer that's right. It's a website. You guys know what a website is. You can. Uh, I'm doing a lot of pie charts. Oh, yeah. That's nice. You can showcase your work. You can blog. You can publish content. You can sell products, services. You can do it all right sure, there yeah. on Squarespace. Promote uh, your your business, obviously. Um, you can announce an upcoming event, like you're getting married. Well, I didn't want to tell people this way. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, you can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, they have great templates. That's why I first started using Squarespace because I like how all the templates look. And it's easy, which is really the most important thing. That would be the part that I gravitated towards. That's right. <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, check out squarespace.com uh, slash dollop for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code dollop to save 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. Boom. Bada bing. Hmm? The the pictures you posted of yourself, um, your headshots. Oh, you little scamp! <laughs> Tennessee Williams presents <laughs> Dave Anthony. <laughs> I had my time. Yama yama. I used to be a young man. You drinking a coke, you <laughs> <little> rebel. <laughs> All right, let's. Dave um, An- Dave underscore Anthony underscore at Instagram. If you want to see my old headshots, Oof. starting when I was about twenty-two. Tell you what, you get that guy laying face down on a mattress for me. Yeah, what? Look out! I'm a coming aboard. Skipper. Excuse me, permission to do whatever I want. <laughs> Granted. <laughs> May 1st, 1830. Okay. Year by Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> this. We need to start again. Mary Harris may have been born on that day to devout Roman Catholics, Richard Harris and Ellen Cotter in County Cork, Ireland. 
Wait, what's going on right now? We're not sure of her birth date. Okay. They lived in a small village described as, quote, a poor, small, irregular village that had 12 buildings in total. This this is just, and this time, my basic vision of Ireland. Is that, <laughs> that's not one town. I mean, yeah. that's. We got 12 buildings. We're a city. Time. We're a city. We're, we need to be respected. We'll need a 12th building. After Mary, they had uh, four more kids. Um, there's very little record of Mary's early life. We don't. We just don't know. Okay. Uh, Irish peasantry uh, united in rebellions against landowners during the 1830s and 1840s. Sure. Mary's father and grandfather joined the fight. Okay. I jumped in that shit. Sure. Got their Irish on. Uh, so they would set fire to rent collector and landlord owned buildings. Okay. Uh, or free fellow peasants that were imprisoned by the British, which okay. I'm, all, I'm all for, 100% yes, on board. Right. The British sent occupying forces when that was happening. Sorry, liberators. Li- sorry, liberators. Liberators. Uh, when Mary was two, her grandfather was arrested and hanged. Jesus, that's... Yeah, well, you don't remember that. You're two, right? Yeah, but you absorb the trauma in a way that's yeah. probably not... <laughs> it's not great. Cool. <laughs> I mean, you put it that you way, know, it's not yeah. Cool. yeah. I mean, I'm sure she's not like, oh, I remember the day I saw it, but she's like, why am I so nervous around authorities? <laughs> What is that about? <laughs> when she was five, her father, her father, her father was put on a list of rebels who were to be captured and sentenced to death. Oh, good Lord. So uh, British soldiers came, uh, entered their home and tore their home apart looking for her father. But he was already on a ship to America. Okay. With his 12 year old son, Richard Jr. Okay. Just take the one kid who has your name. I wouldn't take any of the other ones. Right. You just want the one that's... I'm also guessing there's probably a gender favorability at play. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Also, the twelve year old can work. Yeah, well, and like in this era, you were like, oh, "I'm sorry, but you're a girl." So <laughs> that's the end of our relationship. <laughs> oh, there's our. That's actually the end of our conversation. Okay, so have a good life. You were so close. Oh, to being if you had an Audi, a keeper. If you had had an Audi, but they put it in you. So, um, mm. sorry. Toodles. Good luck. Pushing her out an open door. There you go. They're off you go. Run towards the city a little bit. You see those 12 buildings? <laughs> yeah, go inside one of those. <laughs> it's time to figure... No, oh, there'll be no yawning. Oh, are you crying? <laughs> oh, well, that's allowed. That was expected. I'm surprised it came so late. <laughs> All right, I'm shutting the door. Crap. Go to one of those 12 buildings. <laughs> Hope I hate go to you. one of those 12 buildings now. Get a life going. Hurry up. God, she's really not moving out there, is she? <laughs> She's really standing. I'm not caving. In America. Land of freedom. He worked railroad construction and saved money until he had enough to bring his entire family over. Oh. Who somehow all survived the famine. <laughs> Has that ever happened? That's the first I've ever Has anyone ever, ever just survived it. the boat? I, I mean, yeah, my family survived it, but uh, I'm here. Relax. Mm. Look, you had cute headshots. Mm. Settle down. Uh... So once in America, the Harrises moved to Toronto. Okay. Uh, they're like, fuck America. Sure, um, sure. And then Mary became the first Harris to graduate from high school. Okay. She attended a teacher's college and got a job teaching in a convent in Michigan when she was 23. All right. But she hated the job, and after a year, she quit and went to Chicago to become a dressmaker. Okay. Uh, and uh, she said, quote, she preferred it, preferred sewing to bossing little children. Sure. I completely get that. I do, too. Children are awful. Yeah. When I used to do children's birthday parties, that was what I would think, too. Dresses don't talk back. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They shouldn't. Yeah. In 1861, she moved to Memphis and met George E. Jones. All right. Yeah. What is... Oh, your knowing not is that there's been some sort of sexual interaction betwixt the two. I think so. Ah, so a little fornication. Uh, They got married two months later. Jesus. Right after the Civil War started. Right after the Civil War started, okay? I mean, it makes you horny. It really does. They called it the Luby War. They did. It lubed a lot of people up. So much uh, fucking. Organically. George was a skilled iron molder. Uh, who worked 10 to 12-hour days in brutal conditions. Okay. So it's he's awesome. He has a great job. Right. It does... It, I always try to, like, whenever you, like, you know, you have to work or you're tired from... Tra- I do always try to think back on what life used to be like because you say things like that, you're like, yeah, it's not so bad. 
Just do 10 to 12 hours. Like, what are you doing? Like, I'm working with hot iron all day. Like, what did you do? Like, I got a, they gave me a free lunch and, uh, uh well, the plane was just uh, delayed. And the plane was delayed 45 minutes, which just kind of throws. And then the fucking internet was throws down. your routine. And then they didn't have the internet probably working. Uh, he championed workers' rights and was an active member of the National Union of Iron Molders. Okay, so he should be put to death? Yes. And this is how Mary was introduced to trade unions. George supported them, and Mary stayed home to take care of their firstborn child. Okay. Uh, the Civil War uh, was raging. Uh, Mary, and jo was jo uh, Mary and George against slavery, but, you know, they didn't really talk about it because they're in Memphis. Right. And keep that on the, on the down low. Right, right. Uh, when the war ended in 1865, they had four kids, three girls and a boy, but they were the whole war. They're just fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Post-war industrialization took off. Many Americans. Became they had American. a North South battle of their own. <laughs> I don't get that. Catch my drift. I don't. <laughs> the two of them, uh, uh -huh. had a battle at her bunker hill. If I you don't. follow my I logic. Do, I do not. Uh, it appears that he attacked from the front and the battle, uh, well, uh, finished in the cave, if you follow my meaning. <laughs> I don't. I'm trying to say that uh, the gentleman is very... It, it's a, he used a swing and dole technique, but he penetrated her battle lines. If you catch the drift, I'm hoping you will finally catch, because it's been taking a while for you to seemingly click into my innuendo, if you will, and you will. I don't. No. God, they were fucking! The, oh! All the... <laughs> I don't think so. Oh my God. I don't think so. I don't think that's true. So they had three girls and a boy. Uh, many Americans became factory workers at this time, and George started traveling and organizing workers across the U.S. He was a fucking union guy. Okay. In 1867, Memphis had a very rainy spring, followed by a very hot summer, which sure. means mosquitoes. Sure, skeeters. Skeeters. Which leads to something called yellow fever. Uh, uh, Phoebes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so there was a Phoebes uh, epidemic. Okay. Racist Southerners blamed immigrants, calling it, quote, the stranger's disease. Uh, sure, of course. Who else could be doing this thing? Uh, they have. They clearly. They are just. Uh, they bring. The, they just bring death with them. That's right. Obviously. Uh, the wealthy people fled the city, and working class people had to stay behind, work, and risk their lives. And goodbye to that scenario. That's right. <laughs> so the the city tries to do what it can to stop the spread of the disease in different ways. They uh, naturally they set. Barrels of tar on fire in the streets. Yes, uh, uh, helping to contain the disease in the plumes of toxic smoke. Yeah, yes. uh, it, that was to spread chemical disinfectants. Yes, so the theory here is <laughs> uh -huh. just, uh, yeah. yes, that's plenty. I don't even think I need to walk through it. It's called, <laughs> no, uh, it's, the anim it's an animated theory. It's, yeah, it uh, makes sense. Yes, obviously. Uh, tar has stopped so many epidemics. Yes, it's, yeah. if you picture a pie cooling on a windowsill, those sort of stink. That's right, uh, but with tar. Uh, Tar, a but barrel with tar, of tar, tar barrels. Yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah, R uh, really get in here and whiff it, guys. If you don't want it, get your head over it. Take a pull. Uh, people all over Memphis held sponges to their noses to avoid inhaling. Mm -hmm. uh, they burned the bedclothes of the dead victims, which polluted the air even more. So they were putting the actually putting it out. By yes, burning right, it, giving it a sort of new. It. Yeah, now they're like, good news, it's airborne now from us. <laughs> over. We found a way to make the yellow fever airborne. Over weeks, Mary watched her four children and then George die. Oh, no. You didn't know that was coming. No, you did, though, and you were playing along. You were having a good old time. Yeah. You have no heart. Quote, all about my house, I could hear the weeping and the cries of delirium. Oh. At 32, Mary was a widow with no children. Eesh. When just a couple months ago, she had and four kids. How, the... how was yellow fever transferred? Uh, mosquitoes. So they all independently would have been I, bitten by mosquitoes I, I, and she just didn't? I don't want to say for sure, but I believe it's, you know, because okay. mosquitoes can bite repeatedly. Sure, yeah, so, yeah. you know, they bite you and then they fly it over. Well, and plus they were just like, oh, get out of here. I'm trying to focus on getting the immigrants out of here. They're getting us sick. That's right. We're ki you're killing immigrants, so right. you can't kill mosquitoes. Right. You're busy. Yeah, your hands are tied. Uh, so um, the union, uh, George's union paid for the family's funeral expenses. Mary spent months then as a volunteer nurse helping families tend to their sick. She was probably just like, just kill me with this fucking right, thing. Right, she didn't right, get sick. Right. Uh, in December, the cold killed the mosquitoes and the plague ended. Okay. 
I don't know what you immigrants stopped doing once snow started falling, but stick to not doing it. Uh, yeah, yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I get, I get that white people are fucking. We know that it was you the whole time. Stupid. What? We know that it was you the whole time. Yep. Yeah, sure. Yep. So I don't know why you guys came to an understanding that you were gonna stop giving oh. us all the yellow fever. Yeah. But we're happy. Well, we're still watching you. Have you considered that you might be idiots? We considered everything. And that theory held a lot of weight for some of us. But we just couldn't put the pieces together. I don't know what was standing in our way. We just get so distracted. It makes our minds hurt when we try to put... Well, you're making my mind hurt now. Hey, 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 knock it off there. I like a spicy meatball. Uh, I can't stay mad at you, Luigi. <laughs> you are terrific. You're one of the good ones. Uh, so Mary went, uh, went to Chicago with a little money from George's Union that they had raised to support her, and she opened a dressmaking shop. Okay. And quickly built an upper-class client base. Okay. Her business flourished, but she was still deeply affected by the lives of the poor. Her auto biography quote often while sewing for the lords and barons who lived in magnificent houses along the lakeshore drive i would look out the plate glass windows and see the poor shivering wretches jobless and hungry walking along the frozen lakefront the contrast of their condition with that of the tropical comfort of the people for whom i sewed was painful to me my employers seemed neither to notice nor care and then I wrote Parasite. And thank God things have changed. Yeah. And and we've moved past that. Yes. As yes. human beings, we were like, that's wrong. This is an impossible position to empathize with. Yeah, there's, yeah. This is not applicable I to the I can't imagine today's. living like no, that. No, 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 no. No. In, in October, October 8th. I mean, think all the taxes Jeff Bezos paid last I know. Year. Anyway, I know. let's keep going. It was great, though. He gave $600,000 to, to charity. To the uh, Australia it's very uh, fire big charity, event, yeah. which is really great because he's worth yeah, five hundred billion dollars. So. Yeah, so, it's so nice of him really to great. To he'll like notice. What he is no, he'll notice it. What is essentially a penny. To he'll him. notice it. Not even if he bit a penny in half. On October eighth, which he does. He does. I know. On October eighth, eighteen seventy one, the Great Chicago Fire burned the city of Chicago. They should have just called it the Big Chicago Fire instead of the Great. It gives it. The it was pretty great. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's just like, man, that was great. <laughs> It's like, no, Dan. No, it's great. It's a great fire. I think we either call it the great or the fantastic. Yeah, I like that. Really good. We'll call it a really great fire. I can't think of any other names. Hey, that was great. Well, awesome fire. All right, I'm good with it. This fire is fucking stupendous. Hey, Luigi, get out of here. What are hey, you doing here? Why are you I like out? a spicy meatball. All right, Luigi. Mary fled to the lake shore and waited out the fire for a day and a half. Over 300 people died, 90,000 lost homes and businesses. Wow, that is great. <laughs> it really is that great. Is like, now that I hear it, it is great. Yeah, it sounds... When you hear it, yeah, it sounds... Yeah. Uh, so Mary That's was... crazy. Yeah. Mary, this fire is insane. No, it's a bad fire. Yeah. So Mary was one of them. Uh, in two years, she'd now lost everything twice. Well, at least she's used to it. Yeah. At least she's used to it. Oh, I know what happens. This is I'm when about you... to, the delirium's hitting. Uh, this is oh, I cry a lot. There it is. Just like she'd done in Memphis, she started volunteering. She was helping homeless families relocate, organizing soup kitchens, all allocating donations. Uh, and then while she was doing that, she would run into union men who had known George and respected him and loved him, uh, and they would help Mary stay helpful and give her a sense of working class solidarity. Okay. One night, Mary came across an old acquaintance. He was standing in the doorway, kind of guarding the doorway of this abandoned building. Okay. And she's like, what are you doing? What's... And they start talking. And after some discussion, he goes, okay, you can come inside. It was one of the earliest meetings of the Noble Order of the Knights of Labor, a newly established union. Hmm. So you couldn't tell people you were forming a union back then because right. it, you'd meet in secret because yeah. workers who belonged to unions were blacklisted. Right. Uh, so they couldn't get work. So it, if you were forming a union in, you know, 18, 1870, you're literally putting your life at risk. So there's just never, ever been a time where the powers that be or the government ever has been pro-union. No. All a constant battle to, <clears throat> con always trying to extinguish unions constantly. 
Yeah, pretty much. Uh, in other countries, they 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 understand the value of a union because right. the union gives you the ability to you know. Leverage, leverage, negotiate. negotiate with the whole group of workers at yeah. once. Right, right. Like when some companies would come over here from Europe they, to set up a car plant or whatever, they'd be like, "And we want you to have a union." They'd be like, "No, this is a non-union state." But no, but we were used to. Yeah. No. See here, you just there's a, there is enough negative. I mean, there's plenty of ne- that's why <clears throat> that's why it is so upsetting. When you hear what you just said about like, all right, so the Knights of Labor, they're meeting in secret because, and then you get all, we get so far. And then again, after, you know, we're probably what, like 30 or 40 years past the union's peak essentially. Mm. And, uh, and it still is like, people are like, eh, they're not that good. You know what I mean? Or like, it's <laughs> I know, just it's like oh my amazing. God, if you told these people back then, like, oh, go. and eventually we'll be so misinformed that people will think this is a bad thing. All yeah. right, we'll see you later. Okay, bye. We're Twitter. It. Uh, so the night started in uh, 1869 and, and quietly spread across the country in uh, cities. They accepted skilled, unskilled workers from all industries and would soon as- accept African Americans and women. Uh, but at this point, the knights are not allowing women. But Mary still volunteered and started going to meetings. Sure. So there are long meetings. There's a lot of de- heated debates. And Mary discovered she had a natural talent for public speaking. Okay. And... Uh, and she started honing her speaking skills while learning everything about the labor movement. So and now, are we waiting for a tornado <clears throat> to just kind of come and hit her now? Well, then the financial panic of 1873 <laughs> happened. <laughs> <laughs> Which up to that point is the worst depression the U.S. had ever Oh, experienced. my God. Are you serious? Yeah. Could you imagine? Could you imagine a time in America where... All of these guys have, who have all the money are just speculating on a bunch of bullshit and everything Dave, falls apart and no, all the banks close. No, Could you imagine that? No. Yeah. Well, s- no. So this is the only time it happened except for all the other times. It's a fairy tale to me. Uh, so soon one million people were unemployed. Some cities had 25% unemployment. Wow. So the railroad industry was hit the hardest, but CEOs wanted to keep their profits. Okay. Uh, That's shocking. S- yeah. So they... It, during the Depression, they increased the workers' days and decreased their pay, which they could do because there's 25% unemployment. Right. Which is why I need a union. Right. Well, there we are. Uh, so many workers were killed by collapsing trestles or corroded boilers because the, cause the like, owners want to save money. Yeah, that is like, and so they're not, they're not fixing anything. It's not like we can't find more workers. That's right. Uh, when asked if he was worried his workers would rebel against him, railroad tycoon Jay Gould said, quote, I can hire one half of the working class to kill the other. So this guy had suspenders and a cigar, right? <laughs> when he said that? <laughs> and I want to have the working class to kill the other. God damn it. I just thought of the most evil thing that I could actually say. I, I mean, can't believe I just thought of this. That is the value of... When you get money, your value of human existence is... It evaporates. There are studies that show that as you get more wealthy, you lose empathy. Yeah, your empathy is drained. This guy has zero. Or yeah. he just started out as a psychopath, but either way... I think it's bubble-based. Yeah. So, hunger and homelessness... Which my baths also are. Go ahead. I don't think I want to. Go ahead. No, I think I want to stop this. Keep going. One leg's out. Hunger and homelessness were widespread. Companies did absolutely nothing to help. A prominent industry supporting minister said, quote, the necessities of the great railroad companies demanded that there should be a reduction of wages. Was a dollar a day not enough to buy bread? Water costs nothing. The man who cannot live on bread and water is not fit to live. Oh, my God. The, I, the, the Minister. Religion. Ugh. I mean, look, Jesus turned water into wine. What are you so lazy I mean, for? Yeah, come on. Oh, I can't eat just bread and water. <laughs> I'm a big man. Uh, especially, I mean, that, that's, that's very similar to when, like, the priests, the priests get the jumbo jet. You know, they get yeah. when the priests get the plane, he's like, it's a way for me to go and spread my message. <laughs> it gives the par- the parishioners now can see more. A God needed me to have a million dollar plane. The man who cannot live on bread and water is not fit to live. 
And that's my sermon today. All right. Uh, now, Jimmy, come up here. I'm going to piss on your face. Uh, we're going to hand around the collection bins, too, gang. Throw something in there. No bread, either. No we're bread. Not your fucking bread. We're no at, water. We're, we're uh, gluten-free Atkins-based. In 1876, unionists and political radicals joined forces for the first time to establish the Working Men's Party. Okay. Workers or striking in Martinsburg, West Virginia. You didn't need the men's in there necessarily, right? Workers, but still. Men's? Yeah. Did I say men's? You did, right? Isn't that what it's called? The Working Men's Party? Oh, the Working Men's Party. Yeah, but I bet it was just men. Yeah, I'm sure. But yeah. Uh, So uh, workers striking in Martinsburg, West Virginia, um, it spreads to railroads all across the country because they're stopping trains, right? Right. Uh, And then everyone starts walking off jobs all around the country. Okay. President Hayes sent federal soldiers to Pittsburgh who fired into a crowd of 20,000, killing 26. Jesus Christ. Uh, the next day, riots, 79 buildings, and 105 locomotives were destroyed. So that turned out to be a bad idea for everybody. Yeah. Everybody. everybody. Yeah. Uh, the solidarity of the, of the working class had a powerful effect on Mary. Quote, then and there, I l- learned in the early part of my career that labor must bear the cross for other sins, must be the vicarious sufferer for the wrong others do. I'm a little lost, but I get this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't make sense, but I get it. In the late 1880s, laborers were required to work 14 to 16 hour days. But they were selfish and they wanted just an eight hour day. What? Yeah. That leaves them time for life. I know. The nerve. So unions obviously supported it, uh, but most of union leaders at this point were immigrants so the demands were dismissed as foreign or un-American by the industrialists. Okay. To Wait. The, so just because the, the union leaders are immigrants? Yeah. And most of the union workers probably. Uh, but specifically the leaders. So they were just like, well, this is a foreign idea. It's right. a bunch of foreign or nonsense. Right. But in America, America boys like to work 14, 16. In America, you work in your sleep. <laughs> So Chicago's anarchist party endorsed the eight-hour cause. At the time, anarchists, uh, very radical, very violent. Yes. Uh, This made politicians, businessmen, and law enforcement even more reluctant to negotiate for the eight-hour day. Sure. Quote, employers used the cry of anarchism to kill the movement. A person who believed in an eight-hour working day was an enemy to his country, a traitor, an anarchist. It is shocking how they are able to still get that message out there. Yeah. The foundations of government were being gnawed away by the anarchist rats. Yeah. Yeah. Always, always. Uh, the, the radical, the radical, radical, ra- these radical people. Like, It's. Yeah. Yeah. Police opened fire at a protest uh, at the McCormick Harvester plant in Chicago. Several, several killed. Then a meeting was held in response in Haymarket Square, during which a bomb went off, and then cops shot into the crowd. What did, why are they just shooting into the crowd? They're then, just sending a message. And then some strikers shot back. Seven cops and four workers were killed. Hundreds were injured. And then the leaders of the unions, mostly anarchists, though, were arrested and hanged, even though the bombing was never linked to the protesters. Sure. Well, you don't need evidence. No, you don't need evidence. It went off, clearly. Yeah, it went off. Yeah. Hang them. Newspapers, civic and religious leaders, and the public blame the violence on labor unions and anarchists with zero proof. Right, of course. These things have changed. Yeah, no, of course. The Knights of Labor didn't believe in strikes and violence, so they refused to help the wrongly charged protesters. Okay. A union that doesn't believe in strikes. It's a tough one. Not a great. They just wanted to, like, talk shit out. What are we going to do? Go to work! <laughs> All right, boys. All right, let's do it. <laughs> We're living, though. Uh, so Mary and many workers felt betrayed by the Knights. Knights of Labor membership plummeted. The Haymarket Affair strengthened Mary's belief in the power of numbers and militant activism. The Knights of Labor went from having a million to like 10 years later having 100,000. Okay. Like they, they were just toast. Sure. Uh, so May Day was recognized as a labor holiday after this, and Mary began saying it was her birthday. Okay. This began a long tradition of Mary lying about her birth and age. Okay. Working in coal was an extremely dangerous job. Magnates like Rockefeller did everything they could to produce without spending money. Sure. 
Many workers were injured or died in accidents, but were quickly and easily replaced. Yeah. That's the cool just thing. Like now. Yeah, yeah. That's the cool thing about a guy dying on the job. You yeah. just get another guy. Right. Yeah. Mother Jones, as she started calling herself. Okay. Nicknamed Rockefeller Oily John. Okay. The United Mine Workers of America, the UMW, was established in January 1890 and Mary joined up. Okay. UMW quickly had millions of members and became the largest union in the country. All right. Part of that was due to Mary's field organizing. She spent hours talking to families and groups, getting to know workers, and provided literature on their plans for bettering conditions. John Brophy, a young miner from Pennsylvania, described his first encounter with Mary. Quote, she came into the mine one day and talked to us in our workplace in the vernacular of the mines. So she knew mine talk. Right. Yeah. She like came in. She was like fluent in mine. Yes. Someone who understood. Someone who had listened. Uh, how she got in, I don't know. Probably just walked in and defied anyone to stop her. When I first knew her, she was in her late uh, middle age, a woman of medium height, very sturdily built, but not fat. Nice. This guy is... <laughs> this one, the reporter's like, I think we got the quote. I think the, we got the quote we need. Now, let me walk through some other problems. She would take a drink with the boys and spoke their idiom, including some pretty rough language when she was talking about the bosses. This might have been considered a little fast in ordinary women, but the miners knew and respected her. They might think her a little queer, perhaps. It was an odd kind of work for a woman in those days, but they knew she was a good soul and a friend of those who most lacked friends. Okay. So she fucking hang out. She drank. Right. She talked shit. Right. Yeah. Yes. Men uh, were like, you're so cool. Yeah. We think you're an equal. Yeah, you you swear like us. You're, you're you're like a guy. I mean, she said fuck face. It's pretty great. Another another worker quote: "All this union business sounds ordinary enough, but we picture our organizer neither male nor a former miner, but an old woman drinking with the boys, telling off-colored stories and talking union." Yeah. So it was her speaking skills that swayed many. Quote, her voice was low and pleasant with great carrying power. She didn't become shrill when she got excited. Instead, her voice dropped in pitch, and the intensity of it became something you could almost feel physically. Okay. Yeah, it's hot. What? Hey. Excuse me? You boys want to talk union? I don't think. I'd rather. Mary adopted the persona of Mother Jones. Okay. Her nurturing spirit gave her an appealing maternal quality. She told people she, she was older than she was to reinforce the the Mother Jones image. That's an amazing... I mean, does, Isn't yeah, that interesting? Uh, I mean, that only happens for bars. <laughs> so, <laughs> she wore outdated black dresses and bonnets that she sewed herself and refer, started referring to the male workers as her boys. They're my boys. I'm 91 now. <laughs> I'm passing away. You look like you're 35. No, no, no. I'm very old. Okay. Oh. I, I just saw you last week and... I know. I'm deteriorating rapidly. Oh. I just became 92 since we started talking. Oh, Jesus. Uh, and I'm so old. Okay. This is weird. Oh, my yeah. legs I are think, hurting. I think... Their legs like, are hurting. Like a legit... Rub them. Le legit mental illness. Rub them. No. I'm not going to rub your legs. Want to get a drink? Yeah. Okay. The New York World reported that she was building her own model of motherhood. Quote, it is a big brood she mothers, a big, toilsome, troublesome brood scattered all over the face of the land. How does she do it? By the greatest of all powers, the power of love. She loves her boys. She teaches them to love her. This but sounds also, like a sitcom intro. <laughs> she loves her boys. Okay. But also like a mother, she knows how to make her children behave. Thursday. <laughs> uh, as Mary leaned into the role of Mother Jones More and more she created a legend around herself She kept her past obscure So people did not know who she was Before she became Mother Jones And Mary Jones ceased to exist Okay On July 4th, uh, 1897 The UMW called a nationwide strike Of soft coal workers uh, After they were asked to take a 20% pay cut Wow Hey guys hey, uh, uh, yeah. How do you feel about making 20% less money? Terrible, this job's already oh, awful on. The conditions I, are impossible You I, barely pay us, you overwork us, we have nothing I haven't stopped my uh, offer Okay 
hour more work. No, what? That's worse. Yeah. That's more bullshit. Yeah, yeah, but now you're part of a team. <laughs> no, we've always been part of a team. We yeah, all love each other. We hang like, out. We hate you. But here's the deal, though. If you take less money, you're doing more teamwork. You're we more, understand the concept. It's stupid, and more we of see a through it. Team player. You can't take twenty percent of our money. We don't have anything. And one of you will get. You're going to be named employee of the month. Well, you didn't tell us that part. And what comes with that is we put a plaque up in the coal mine. We've seen it. We've all wanted our face up there. We're in. Yes. That is crazy. And by the way, I'm sure the, yes, the ability to actually get people to listen to these strikes or things like that is what we just completely Oh, it's, yeah. yeah. We do no longer have that. I mean, gear. it's been happening. The fast food workers, the fifteen, that actually, the five for fifteen is that, and teachers. It. But we need a mass walkout. Teachers have done well. Yeah, but yes. So tens of the thousands walk in the strike, but the men and their families had to be fed and housed during the strike. Obviously, sure. So Mother Jones went to Western Pennsylvania to help. From the Pittsburgh Daily Post, quote: She was given a rousing reception. She advanced to the edge of the platform and listened to the noisy approval of the crowd with a smile of satisfaction. Someone in the gathering shouted, hats off! And in an instant, every head was uncovered. Oh, my Lord, Dave, I need to lay down. <laughs> she spoke, quote, I see that liberty is not dead. This gathering is a protest of the army of toilers against the law by injunction someday this army will rise up in its might and turn the tables army of toilers is fantastic yeah she's a good fucking speaker i wish that there was army of toilers army of toilers Oof. she brought it during the strike she convinced farmers to donate food she organized uh, escorts for wagons delivering supplies now i don't know why they'd want sex workers with them hey and she gave speeches. The, I'm with the wagon tonight. <laughs> Hi, baby. And she gave speeches to fire up workers. And then once everything was set up in a place, she would move on to another other mining counties and do the same thing. So she's, she's franchising. Just fucking organizing all these workers. Sure. Or franchising, as you call it. <laughs> she was getting more and more attention. Red lobstering. That's right. Thank you. The Tennessean on September 4th, 1897 quote mother jones is a brave woman she left her home in chicago some time ago to visit the scene of miners strikes but with all this miss jones is a womanly woman when the reporter called on her yesterday she had to excuse herself for a few moments for at the time she was engaged in curling her hair what, what? That's, i mean i just love that they're like she's still a woman g gentlemen I know you're getting scared, but she is still a woman. We want to see the penis. <laughs> Her heart was always in West Virginia, though, where the miners had it worst. Also, a lot of Irish miners there. Sure. Um, quote, the man, the man or woman who uh, would witness such scenes as of, I have witnessed in West Virginia would betray God Almighty if he betrayed those people. West Virginia mines were in remote areas and coal companies built company towns, which we all know are awesome. Mm -hmm, yes. They control everything, the doctor, the school, the nurses, mayor, city council, judiciary, police, preachers. Yes. Most workers and their families lived in company housing and were paid in scrip. Uh, company money, they can only use the company stores. This forced miners oh to buy God. on credit and then they were I trapped in an endless cycle of debt. I mean, this is still is going so, on in places in America. It's so crazy. I mean, it was like 10, 15 years ago that there was happening in orange orange farms in Florida. It's they just, still had fucking script and company stores. And, it's so crazy. Yeah. Um, so it forces miners to buy on credit, more debt, more debt. Companies did not let miners shop elsewhere, even though they didn't have real money to shop elsewhere. They yeah, still couldn't they shop still elsewhere. Like you can't. If you figure it out, you still can't. <laughs> So West Virginia's mines had the worst working conditions. Owners spent less on safety than any other state. Nice. They didn't follow any laws. That's great. There's a state law that banned scripts, a ban on child labor, a ban on safety measures that blew all that off. <laughs> West Virginia mines had the highest death rate in the U.S. If a worker said anything bad about the company, he'd just be fired and replaced immediately. And in 1987, sorry, in 1897, Mother Jones came to organize several counties and to hold large rallies in Charleston. But armed guards stopped her. So she went door to door to wow. talk to the, the families and the union men. A fellow organizer said she was good with foreign born uh, laborers who didn't speak much English. She'd communicate with them, quote, through a combination of broken English, hand gestures, and French classics. French classics? Swearing. 
Oh, okay. That's what they call swearing. French classic. We got to bring that back. That's great. It's the fucking best. You know that guy. I like his stuff, but he drops a lot of the French classics, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. French classics. Yeah, that's that's a thing. That's got to be a thing. Yeah. That's a Marx Brothers movie. <laughs> She used Irish humor and told jokes about company bosses to lighten the mood. She also spoke, uh, she talked shit about priests and ministers who took corporate bribes and said, quote, labor must be its own religion. She traveled with a band called the Mother Jones Band. That's, now Dave, I've liked everything so far, but now I've I found something I love. I couldn't find anything else uh, about the Mother Jones uh, Band, but the Mother Jones Band was a thing. I'm going to picture it as funk bass, if that's okay with everybody. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They had three bass players. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, going to picture the P-Funk. Yeah, that's, that's what right. I'm going to picture. Right. Okay. Uh, she held up miners' contracts and claimed, quote, even the Tsar of Russia would be dethroned if he attempted to enforce such tyranny on his subjects. Boom, 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 yeah, that's right. Boom, 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 boom. We're doing the Tsar of Russia. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, miners began calling themselves Mother Jones boys. They kept pictures of her in their in their homes as if she were a patron saint. You know, she's 190. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't. She wasn't always too kind. Uh, she scolded some miners for being cowards, telling them if they were afraid to fight, then she would continue alone. She went wherever she was needed, funded by the UMW and socialists. She helped striking garment workers in Chicago, bottle washers in Milwaukee breweries, Pittsburgh steel workers, El Paso streetcar operators, Cal Calumet uh, copper miners, and tons more. From a Boston Herald the article on West Virginia strikes in 1901, uh, quote, So the old lady, standing very quietly in her deep, far-reaching voice, painted a picture of a life of a miner from his boyhood to his old age. It was a vivid picture. You pity yourself, she said, but you do not pity your brothers or you would stand together to help one another. And then she called on them to awaken their minds. And as she see, see, ceased speaking, men and women looked at each other with shame faces for almost everyone had been weeping. Wow. She's a fucking speaker. Jesus. Yeah. She brought the shit. Yeah. A game. Always. Right, relax. You're getting, a -game. A little, you're getting a little intense. A game. Okay. Settle down. In 1902, Mother Jones was leading a rally from a platform when state marshals appeared in the distance. Here we go. Finally. Shh. We found a law you broke that we just wrote. <laughs> you're a woman talking. It's not okay. She shouted, quote, goodbye, boys, I'm under arrest. Don't surrender. Nice. She was arrested at her trial. The judge lectured her. What is she being arrested for? Yeah, I mean, they would just arrest her on chumped up charges. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the judge lecture, lectures her, saying she had, quote, strayed from the lines and paths which the all-wise being intended her sex to pursue. Oh, my Lord, this guy. Yeah. This is, yeah. I mean, he's yeah. really checking a lot of the boxes of wrong angles. Oh, did I, did I stray from the line when my family died? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I made babies and then they all died and I decided to kick ass instead. The, the idea that you're using uh, an invisible deity to tell you about what gender means. Yeah. It, yeah. Well... Now, come on. There's a fake man in the sky. <laughs> you know what God, do? you know, God, God was very clear. He says you should just be fucking. And you're here to cook food. and fuck. You're here to cook and fuck. Cook, fuck, cook, fuck. Cook, fuck. If you're That's not the fucking, whole last part of the Bible. Look, cook, fuck, cook, fuck, cook, cook. Read fuck. Revelations. If you're not fucking, then you should be cooking. If you're not cooking, then you should be fucking. If you're not cooking and fucking, you should be dead. That's right. He also said that there were many charities that she could engage in of a lawful character that would be more in keeping with what we have been taught and what experience has shown to be the true sphere of womanhood. Yes, thank you. So she could do like a charity thing where she helps babies or yeah, something like uh, that. Yeah, you know, raise money for cookies. Some sort of pie thing. Uh, yeah, a pie charity. That's right. All right. So Mother Jones listened. I sentence you to oven mitts for a year. <laughs> So Mother Jones listened, and then when he was done talking, she called the judge a scab. <laughs> you must have been furious. And then she told them she would do it all over again, and then in a very gentle voice, she noted how old they both were and suggested they might be friends in death one day. Wow. He was like, wait, what the hell? I believe she told them she would see him in hell. Yes. <laughs> the courtroom audience flipped out, enjoyed it very much. Yeah. Uh, West Virginia District Attorney Reese Blizzard's closing statement. That's a fucking name. I'm actually a weatherman. 
<laughs> God, how can I, how can there not be weathermen yet? My uh, name is Reese Blizzard. If only he. Uh, his closing statement, quote, there sits the most dangerous woman in America. She comes into a state where peace and prosperity reigns, crooks her finger, and 20,000 contented men lay down their tools and walk out. All right. And you can listen to me on what a quick strike tragedy in this state is. My last name is Blizzard. <laughs> I rest my case. Rest, case rest. Case rest. I think I'm going to... Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I think I'm going to start to drop the Blizzard stuff from my closet. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It, it just, le legitimately doesn't make sense. I'm trying so hard, but I think I know there's a I'm, line. I'm, let me take over. Let me take over. Okay. I'm Bobby Rains. And I'm something Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> We're the weather lawyers. Uh, we rest our case. We asked the case. Hey, we should have not done that last part. Uh, I felt I like had, I had something, and then I stood up, and then I said my name. You had, I had nothing. nothing. I had and nothing. then you had nothing. I did. I had nothing. You literally stood up, said your, just said your I name. I said my name, but then I started thinking of your name, and then I what also started thinking of the weather, and I'm like, why am I thinking of the weather right now? And then oh, I remembered. That's actually a good angle. Because your last name that's is Blizzard, and my hold last hold name hold is Rains. I'll save okay. it all. Yep. Uh, and uh, we don't know whether you say guilty or not guilty, but... Uh, How's weather spelled in there? Wrap it up. I, uh, I'm done. Yeah, wrap it up. Oh, my God. Yeah, that did not make oh sense. Oh, my God. That didn't make sense at oh all. Oh, my God. That so was hell. Here's what I think we should do. We need to kill each other. I think we need to kill each other. Immediately, we need to go yeah. out of the courtroom and I, kill I have a gun. You have a gun. Let's just shoot each let's other Let's hurry up. Face. Let's okay. go now. Let's yep. go now. Yep. So, uh, so she's, she, she's not innocent. She's released. Okay. Um, so... Uh, 1897 and 1904 strikes significantly improved miners' standard of living and, and workplace uh, safety over those years. Okay. Mother Jones was also very successful bringing workers' wives into the movement. Nice. She organized what she called the Mop and Broom Brigades. Oh my, what? Okay. So they were mothers and wives who stood at the entrance to a mine where a strike was happening, and they would be there 24 hours a day. There was always... Wives or, or moms there. Usually, they, she would always try to have a baby in their arms. Okay. And then they would shame any non-striking workers go, trying to go in. So they're like shame barkers? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh, where are you going? I've got to go to work. Yeah, have you seen my... You know yeah. this little guy here? Do you want to say hi? This hey, is little guy. Billy. He hasn't All eaten. right, I got to get going. He hasn't eaten in four days. We should You know him. why? Why? Because my husband well, we used to work in this mine. Oh, uh, look, uh, that's nothing. And to now do he it. can't. He's on strike because he to wants to, to make more money. I'm sorry about that. Oh, oh, wait, he's dying. Oh my God, oh, is he dying? dying? Yeah, he looks like he's dying. You know why? Because oh, you're, going to you're, take... yeah, you're killing him. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're killing him. I'll come in for a minute. Okay, just go ahead and leave. Okay. Okay, bye bye. Damn it. Yeah. Damn it. Scout. And then another one. Hey. hey. Hey, excuse me. I got to go in there. Oh, this is my baby. Uh, it's a cute one. I know. You're going to tell me it's dying. I'm not falling for it. Yeah, he died. Oh, my God. I'll go in just for a minute. <laughs> oh, what am I? Damn it. Uh, so, uh, so that worked. That was a great tactic. Yeah. Uh, having women as part of the labor movement was very unusual for the time. Mother Jones, quote, why wouldn't a woman uh, be able to discuss mine affairs? Who has a better right? Has she not given birth? Has she not raised you and cared for you? Has she not struggled along for you? Does she not today, when you come home covered with corporation soot, have hot soap and water and towels ready for you? Does she not have your supper ready for you and your clean clothes ready for you? It's a old, a old thinking there a little bit. She makes a good point. While Mother Jones advocated for the inclusion of women, she had a contradictory stance on women's rights. Hmm. She was against female suffrage. Interesting. Ah, okay. And argued, quote, you Who's don't... Who's going to wet the towels? <laughs> argued, quote, you don't need the vote to raise hell. You don't? Well, but... She, dot, dot, I, dot. But wouldn't it be great to have it? What about both? Just in case? <laughs> Just in case democracy existed? She believed it was more important to liberate the entire working class before moving on to gender issues. I think we can walk and chew gum, but okay. I, here's what I think she's saying. I think that she's seeing middle-class women and upper-class women fighting for what they want and not giving a shit about 
the right. poor people S- splitting the movement so, I, so so that's what that's what she's saying she got a really negative obviously sure. negatively attacked for this but you see her point when she's dealing with starving people versus people who want to vote i think that it's a very applicable uh to today when like i think people who are as aware realize there is one issue and that's the only issue that matters but that's people right. are like but also well, let's do this other stuff what about this stuff yeah and you're like that's terrible but uh mm. Uh, she was attacked by suffragists and accused of being anti-women's rights. Mother Jones, quote, I am not anti to anything which brings freedom to my class. She thought wives played an important role as nurturers and motivators for striking men, but not as workers. She thought young girls working in mills were being robbed and demoralized. So, quote, working men should earn a wage that would allow women to stay at home to care for the kids. So it's a little old thinking. Sure. But, you know, it's. I get what she's saying. Right. I also think you can fight for both things. Yes. But again, the upper class women are not fighting for poor people to have a decent living wage. They're fighting for the vote. Yeah. So it's complicated. Uh, She wasn't great on race. Uh, This is like we're digging up her old tweets. (laughs) (laughs) Mother Jones always preached racial inclusivity, except she was against Chinese immigration. Oh, good Lord. (laughs) What? I can't. How does that? All the races huh? should be working in the. Not the Chinese. <laughs> how does that even happen? Not the Chinese. <laughs> All of the races it's not are even, my it, children, it's, except those devils. It's not even like. It's just funny because that's so crazy. How do you? Well, remember. So we've we've talked like, about this in the other idea episodes. That you're like, I mean, the Chinese... We need to look at your brother and your sister next to you. Unless they're Chinese, then ask them again to leave. We've been very clear. You're not welcome here. But everyone else, we are all one. We are all united. Is that a Chinese guy? Ask him. Go, sir. So remember, this is when, you know, the strikes, the the railroad kingpins oh, brought in Chinese. Right, right, Specifically right. to fuck over the striking workers. So... Uh, yeah, again, that that's how capitalists play sure. play everyone against each right. other. That's how they keep their money. But you're saying that the probability that she would not have an issue with Chinese people if they were not brought into uh, work during... undermine the strikes. Yes, yeah, it would probably be probably a lot less. I would be, imagine. Okay. Um. So she, but she did fight for the Chinese Exclusion Act. Quote: When the Union Pacific was bringing over Chinese to break the labor movement, the battle began there, and I had a hand in that Chinese agitation. We kept it up and stopped the Chinese coming over. The Union Pacific had been bringing them over in hordes and using them to break the labor movement, which is true. But you don't blame the Chinese people yes. who just want jobs. Yes. The true villains are the fucking yes yeah. again the puppet master. But she had a deep respect for African Americans and what they had been through. Unless they like those Chinese people. Unless they come for our jobs! <laughs> uh, in June of 1903, Mother Jones went to a textile mill in rural Philadelphia where thousands of child workers were on strike for better paying conditions. I mean, the idea... Oh, America a child, is so great. A child strike. 1903. Children, children on strike. Children are, children are striking for better wages. <laughs> Children. 1903. 1903. Children. All right, boys. Come on. These conditions are no good, I tell you. I want to make $8 an hour before I hit puberty. (laughs) And five smoke breaks instead of four. (laughs) Uh, uh, They were mostly in their early teens, but some were as young as six. Pennsylvania law banned children uh, under 13 from working in mills, but no one enforced it. Good. Mother Jones, imagine, quote... Dave, imagine working with a six-year-old. Oh, God, what a fucking nightmare. I mean, nightmare. imagine working First of all, number to, one. Imagine sharing workspace Number one, with a can I just say the chatter? Oh, my God. Oh. Trying to give it directions? Fucking God. No, I'm damn. telling you, go over there, do, do... <laughs> why? But why do they even make it like that? Don't ask me another goddamn question. Jesus Christ, put on your welding mask. I did, but then I forgot it next to my paintbrush. I have a paintbrush. I got two paintbrushes. <laughs> Sh- I don't care about your paintbrushes. Yeah, but that ain't the, the one guy, he went over there and then he helped me paint a dinosaur. Will you shut up? Uh, put on the welding mask and start. Put down the paintbrush. You're not a fucking painter. I want to show you my drawings. 
And then I put on the welder's mask. I don't want to see your drawings. It got hot in there. This is the airplane. <laughs> Yay! Can I put in? It's tired again. I. <sighs> Will you hold my hand? I don't want to. I love you, mister. Jesus, I'm your foreman. Uh, Just don't. <laughs> How is work? It's just oh, it's, it's really bad. I fire some of these kids. It's really bad. I, I honestly feel like I'm running a kindergarten. <laughs> we're not hitting our numbers. <laughs> we're really oh not. God. Our numbers we're, are so our bad. Are terrible. <laughs> these kids don't understand. <laughs> uh, Mother Jones quote: Six and seven year olds start their work day at five thirty a.m., taking their scanty lunch at noon, <laughs> <laughs> working until seven p.m. Oh my then returning home to a rushed dinner. Uh, okay. Hey, Ma, give me a whiskey. <laughs> Exhausted. Oh, the and, boss man's up my ass. <laughs> and sleep until the factory whistle blew again in the morning. Well, Mom, I'm going to need two diapers tomorrow, Ma. Well, it's well, a big day. Ma, pack me two. Pack me two diapers. I'm probably going to shoot my pants a bunch tomorrow. <laughs> I have seen mothers take their babies and slap cold water in their face to wake the poor little things. Oh, sorry, I'm late. I just am, I'm sleeping like a six-year-old. I watched them all day long tending to dangerous machinery. I have seen their helpless limbs torn off. Oh, my God. And then when they are, were disabled and of no more use to the master, thrown out to die. No. <laughs> thrown out, out to, to die. die. Uh, hey, we're going to need another four-year-old. That was missing an arm. Bye. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> it's just when you see people say that socialism has never done anything, I really want to take a child's arm and beat them with it. Oh, my God. Her attention switched to child labor after witnessing this. Oh. But the mills blew off all of Mother Jones' demands. They like it. Frustrated, Mother Jones decided on another tactic. Quote, I'm going to show Wall Street the flesh and blood from which it squeezes its wealth. Oh, boy. July 7th, over 300 children and adults began to march to President Theodore Roosevelt's summer home on Long Island from Philadelphia. We strike. It was hot and many were too tired to march. Locals gave food and lodging as they walked along the coast. In Princeton, New Jersey, Mother Jones was asked to speak on campus. She pointed at a 12-year-old boy, quote, here's a textbook on economics. He gets $3 a week, and his sister, who is 14, gets $6. They work in a carpet factory 10 hours a day, while the children of the rich are getting their higher education. And then she glared at each and every student in the crowd. Which, so 45 minutes later, <laughs> time to continue speaking. Wow, that is so crazy. I mean, I'm also truly like... Uh, being confronted with that. Like, I wish we could be confronted that yeah. simply today. Uh, a week later, the striking kids arrived in New York City. Uh, they were greeted by thousands of supporters. The Social Democratic Party offered their headquarters as a space for them to, uh, you know, stay, whatever, uh -huh. headquartered. Sure. She took the kids to Coney Island, where she put them in cages as, like, a symbolic... I, I couldn't find more about this, but I just read that she... <laughs> She put them in like metal cages. Careful to like with the message. <laughs> Careful. Very fine line. Just actually caging children. Uh, and then, which and would then, never happen. And the no. kids also got taken to the circus. That was nice. Uh, the Sounds kid, like a really fun strike. Yeah, the kids have been traveling for four weeks now. Uh, they were very tired. They but walked. They walked from Philadelphia to New York. Oh my God. In in the heat. Yeah. Mother Jones took three kids and four union men to President Theodore Roosevelt's Oyster Bay mansion, but they were stopped at the gates and told, quote, the president has nothing to do with child labor. What? Not my issue, lady. <laughs> oh, you're thinking of another Roosevelt. <laughs> Bully! Uh, the president never responded. He's just got kid, like he's got a lion head on the wall next to like a child's hand. <laughs> there we are. This is the trophy room. <laughs> He never responds, and then soon a coal strike in Colorado pulled Mother Jones away, and the children marched back to Philadelphia and went back to work. Can we get a cab? <laughs> no. <sighs> they lost, but the Mill Children's Strike publicized child labor and pressured politicians to do something, which they didn't do, okay. because it would take another 36 years for the federal government to ban child labor. 
36 oh, wow, wow, years wow. because America and capitalism are awesome. Yeah. Between 1905 and 1912, Mother Jones participated in strikes across the country and uh, took jobs with the Socialist Party as a lecturer. But she was getting old and had hospital and was hospitalized with a pneumonia once. <clears throat> Still, she exaggerated her age even more and now claimed to 285. be... 285- <laughs> Thousand. <laughs> she not going to be in her 80s when she was still in her 70s. Okay. And then she started working at mines and helping children load coal. Uh-huh. That's the right age to start mine That's the working. best of the 70s. Absolutely, yeah. yep. February 1913, violence broke out during protests in, oh, I'm going to say this wrong, Kanawha Valley, uh, West Virginia. The governor declared a martial law and sent the state militia to arrest strikers and organizers. So Mother Jones went... And she gathered a small group, and they marched, uh, or they didn't march, they got on a train heading for Charleston, hoping to uh, talk to the governor, Mm -hmm. face him down. Now, a rumor started that she was coming with an army to assassinate the governor and bomb the Capitol building. Well, now, Dave, that's a big rumor. Papers reported it as fact. The Newcastle Herald said the strikers would, quote, tear out the heart of the sheriff, kill the governor, and wipe the militia off the map. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is just good journalism. Uh, when Mother Jones and her miners reached the train station, they were arrested. The Fairmont, West Virginian headline, quote, Mother Jones, aged agitator, kept in a boxcar. Okay. She was then taken back to Kennewa Valley and jailed. She was charged with conspiracy to murder and had to appear in a military tribunal, even though she was a civilian arrested in a civilian area. Okay, so they, so they, they just, really bent the rules for this one. They just decided to give her a military trial. Will because you wear they... this <laughs> and the beret? There you are. Now, she refused to recognize the legitimacy of a court-martial. Sure, but, which is, I mean, that's... That kind of makes sense. Sounds like it's legally right. <laughs> uh, the Supreme Court rejected that, and she was given a 20-year sentence. What? For uh, conspiracy to murder, which she was never doing. Wow. Can you imagine uh, a miscarriage of justice in America? <laughs> Not here. She was put into solitary confinement. Oh, there's that fun term again. She said, quote, I can raise just as much hell in jail as anywhere. But 22 days later, she was found, quote, lying on a straw tick on the floor, carrying a temperature of 104 with very rapid respir- re- respiration and a constant cough. Mother Jones had pneumonia. So to save face, the governor secretly had Mother Jones sent to a hospital to recover. And then after she was recovered, he was just going to put her back in solitary. But word got out and the public was furious. People demanded her release and a congressional investigation. Within a week, a congressional committee reached West Virginia and the industrialists were... Just for a second, that... It's... Can you imagine getting a congressional investigation into an anti-establishment figure's health within a week. Yeah, I know. I mean, that just doesn't... No. Uh, that's not even on the radar that of... That wouldn't happen at all. ...possibility. No. And the industrials were under so much pressure that they were forced to negotiate with the union and the workday was reduced to nine hours. Miners were allowed to buy from uh, stores outside the company town. So the miners are allowed to be people. That's right. You, you can be humans. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. But still enjoy your fun bucks. But Mother Jones remained in solitary confinement. She survived a second battle with pneumonia, and after 85 days, they just let her go. Okay. Very, very weird handling of this sentence. Yeah. When she arrived in New York City, she was met by a mob, quote, shouting, stamping, hand clapping, people threw kisses to the aged agitator and flowers at her feet. She gave interviews to reporters in which she made horribly racist comments. Okie dokie. Quote, but in calling for unity among American workers, she also made the most blatant racist comment of her long career, complaining of both the Japs and the Hindus were entering the country in large numbers and becoming a serious menace to labor in the Western states. Hey, there's, it's it's, it's not, uh, a, not a good look. No one's, no one's perfect. But it's certainly, it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. She was close. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. She went right back to work and headed for Colorado to organize uh, strikers in the Colorado Coal War, where she was arrested again, quote, without a warrant or without any suspicion of a crime. 
Ah, yes. Mother, jo Mother Joe's was illegally held in a dungeon-like cell for a month. A letter she wrote, quote, let the nation know that the great United States of America is now holding Mother Jones incommunicado in an underground cell surrounded by rats, tin horn soldiers, and other vermin. The, pu uh, the uh, public flooded the White House with telegrams, and again she was released with no charges. She testified before the House Mines and Mining Committee and urged Congress to intervene in Colorado, and Congress did absolutely nothing. And as we've talked about in the Ludlow Massacre episode, uh, many men would be killed in that strike in what would become known as the Ludlow Massacre. After that, people protested across the country, and a government report claimed, quote, there was positive danger of a national revolution growing out of this Colorado strike. Now that's scary. Can you imagine the government doing something like killing someone and then saying, well, they were going to attack somebody? Nope. I can't either. Not recently, at least. Mother Jones spoke to President Wilson, but he just offered his sympathies and nothing more. The union would eventually win in Colorado a few years later. Mother Jones opposed World War I and American involvement, and in 1920, she made a statement opposing the 19th Amendment. Quote, I have never had a vote, and I have raised hell all over this country. You don't need a vote. You need convictions and a voice. I am not a suffragist. In no sense of the word am I in favor of women's suffrage. In a long life of study of these questions, I have learned that women are out of place in political work. There already is a great responsibility upon women's shoulders, that of rearing rising generations. Home training of the child should be their task, and it is the most beautiful of tasks. So, I, I, here's what I, like I said, I think that she's seeing richer women fighting for the vote while being upset that poor kids are losing their limbs and right. shit like that. So, but at the same time, yeah, you can do both. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You can do both. So, yeah, she's wrong. Yes. Uh, she called women's suffrage a middle class movement. At a dinner honoring her, she said, quote, God Almighty made the woman and the Rockefeller gang of thieves made the ladies for the idle rich woman who parades her finery before the hungry and poverty stricken is a modern inquisitor turning the thumbscrews of envy and despair into the very vitals of those who are in reality her sisters. Jesus Christ. I mean, she's very good with a word. Good Lord. Um, but, you know, that's how I feel about, you know, you see uh, Hollywood liberals. Uh, who's the who's the the actress from Who's the Boss? The uh, Judith Light? No. the no, Oh, Alyssa the, Milano. Alyssa Milano is right. a, a great example, I think, today of what she's talking about. Right. Which is, you know. Yeah. There, there, there is this this they're fighting for what matters to them and yet the the astounding poverty like the fact that you can drive around Los Angeles and there's where we have 70,000 homeless people or more and 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 then fight for other things like there there's like this blind spot to horrific the, poverty that's astounding the the that is it's very interesting because people who are also liberally minded think that when someone who is a fellow liberal says, you know, says stuff like this is the only issue that matters or um, some of the rhetoric that comes out, these are people who have now lost such touch with what actual people go through yeah. that they're just like, no, you know, there's, this is, this is the way to do it. And it's like, I have to feed a family. Yeah. Like there's just not room for this sort of thinking in my world there right. it's like every I don't know why he particularly drives me crazy but every time Donnie Deutsch talks I want to well he's fucking awful he's the worst but he's also a liberal who has no concept of what's happening no concept and yeah. never has and people who have never had a concept of what it's like to struggle or need help or just need safety nets there yeah. people who don't know that feeling of course they don't see the 
matter in no. that issue at all it doesn't affect their kids it doesn't affect their the world right around them yeah of course not so i think i think that's what she's talking about and i think you know that's what martin luther king talked about that's yeah. what a lot of people have been and with what you say about homelessness too it is when does when do people become violent thinkers towards homeless versus well, and that is it's something already happening it's happening it's happening the and the reason is because the second that it starts to make your neighborhood not as great as it was before you want the problem done i mean i it's like bees like everybody i'm sorry it's like bees okay everybody <laughs> uh you know save the bees bees are oh, dying yeah. like i see bees all the time you know you yeah. see bees in these like dazed states yeah and you're like gotta save the bees the bees are everything einstein said if the bees go away we die i had my apartment infested by bees once and you kill them I mean, you want, you are like, get, I don't care, get the bees. I like, I can't live in a hive. You know what I mean? So it's like the second that that, you know, there is. Yeah, 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 I get it. So I it's get, like the bees. It's like the bees. Uh, Mother Jones wrote an autobiography in 1923, and her timeline events was very off. Historians believe the book cannot be trusted or used as a factual reference. She celebrated her. 100th birthday on <laughs> May 1st, 1930, and I died. I mean, who does this? Who yeah, lies? I, yeah, That's... she died six months later on November 30th, 1930. She's on probably, 130th. Probably 93 years old, I think. Uh, okay. Thousands attended her memorial service in D.C. She was buried where she wanted to be in Mount uh, Olive, Illinois, in the Union Miner Cemetery, where a lot of miners who have been killed mm -hmm. uh, are buried. Uh, she's known for the phrase, pray for the dead and fight like hell for the living. And her magazine is, um, Mother Jones is named after her. Oh, and okay, right. You can read a lot of right, stuff right. there that will make you upset. Right. Um, you know, the editor complains about uh, homeless people in San Francisco. <laughs> oddly, oddly. I've complains brought, about odd. them. Yeah. On, yeah. on Twitter, and you're like, you're you're and the that, editor of Mother Jones magazine. But that's also the problem with with <laughs> journalism is that you listen. You, a lot of prominent, jur I mean, not all, but a lot of prominent journalists now are also rich, super rich. So, and and that's the same with the news. When you watch media and you consume your uh, news through the quote unquote personality based news, yeah, these are millionaires. They're millionaires. Millionaires. All millionaires. All millionaires telling you why you shouldn't care about issues that seem important to you. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty great. Yeah. The ability to make us ignore our own instincts is pretty marvelous. Awesome. It's pretty awesome. Uh, sources, Mother Jones and the March of the Mill Children by Penny Coleman. Mother Jones, the Most Dangerous Woman in America by Elliot Gorn. Uh, the Importance of Mother Jones, uh, Madeline Horton. Uh, the Speeches and Writings of Mother Jones. Uh, well, that's just by Mother Jones. Um, and then Mother Jones, Fierce Fighter for Workers' Rights, Judith Pinkerton Josephson. Uh, Judith, I would lose the middle name. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So she's a badass. And, yeah. Uh, it's the racism stuff is uh, upsetting. The, yes. The suffragist stuff is a bummer. But, yes. you know, you got to, you got to, there's just some people you got to go, eh, she, she did a lot for someone yeah and you can take the good and use the good yeah uh, hopefully yeah. it is i mean as we know the the like unions are it is so important to have oh it turns out without unions, unions your country turns into a giant fucking shit pile and again it is they are anytime that knot gets tied tightly they are pulling on the thread again they, mm -hmm. it is constant it never ends. Constant, constant constant battle to make you believe you can, can trust them and don't need a union. Yep, and that's why people in Ariz and Amazon warehouses are walking on broken feet. Yeah. Yes, and you're not allowed to like. I mean, yeah. I mean, there there is a story that I've contemplated doing, which is about a. I don't remember the name of the company, but it's a factory in, in the South, and it's literally just like people getting their arms ripped off all the time, and like horrific injuries because there's no union and of course the government the local government is not doesn't give a shit about osha regulations yeah and they're letting them do and it's literally people getting maimed all the fucking time because they need what to make ten dollars what an part hour. of this didn't seem comedically fruitful to you <laughs> uh but also and they are this stuff now that's happening with pro protest laws and stuff uh, that are starting i mean that shit is well, they're preparing for climate change yes that. And but it is, 
you know, don't tell anybody it's illegal to protest. Well, I hate, I hate to tell them. And it's but illegal to protest the climate specifically. I hate to tell them, but um, kids are kids are being raised on computers. So if you, you want to stop protests, you better take all their computers because yeah. at some point they're going to start shutting shit down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Once, I mean, truly, like, yeah. it'll be a different, it's going to be different. Mm-hmm. It'll be a reboot. And yep. we love reboots. Reboot. Uh, so that'll be great. Um, is there anything else we wanted to talk about, David? I know. Good luck to everyone in Australia. Yes, truly. And um, there are a lot of great charities to donate to. Um, Tofop guys have a, Tofop, a GoFundMe. Yeah, uh, Will and Charlie from Tofop have uh, one. There's the Red Cross. And then, the yeah, like I said, the, the place that I think I'm going to donate to is, yeah, it's koala and, like, animals, yeah. you know, because that shit is... Turns out the fucking wombats... Well, and uh, it's awful. No, did you hear about the wombats? What? The wombats were, you know, wombats have... Um, Dens uh-huh. that they hide from fires in, they were running out and guiding other animals into their dens. Oh my god, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, and in Australia, like they're still while this is all going on, pushing coal, yeah. oil. Pol- yeah. I mean. This now we are literally in the gif of the dog in the house on fire yeah, saying right. it's fine. Yeah, I mean it is fucking crazy. Like yeah. the fact that it's just ultimate corruption. I mean, yeah. I, and <laughs> and we're there, and most most countries are too. I mean, we are just mm-hmm. this. Well, is, the, it, the change will be rapid, and they won't know what hit them. Basically, yeah. what what do you mean? Well, a the, change the is, people. Yeah, people. Oh, yeah. People only take so much, and then and then. Oh, and then the f- the switches flip. When the switch flips. Oh yeah. You're, all, all the oh, yes. all the coal loving people are not. Well, even when you're talking it. about the uh, you know like the ability to mobilize people on the level that she did in this story, I'm like that's impossible. It's it is. I mean, we should be in the streets now. Yeah, we will. But we will. Yeah, <laughs> I we mean, will. we'll have no choice. You know. Yeah. And it'll be really fun. And and the cool <laughs> thing is the temperatures will be, it'll be nice times to be outside when you got to protest right. these things. That's right. Which is part of the problem in Australia too. It's so polluted that it's hard to, you know, activism does suffer under. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. This. I mean, that's a, clearly a problem. All right. Well, we have fun in Australia. Thanks. Oh no, we'll do one more podcast before then. Yeah. Right. This week. Yeah. When does this one come out? Tomorrow. All right. Can drop this one tomorrow, Aaron. Yeah. Yeah, it's hot. Drop it. All right. Well, this is, I mean, let's do the regular wrap out. All right, everybody. This has been uh, for Dave Anthony. This is Gareth Reynolds uh, saying, uh, hey, if you think uh, American history is fucked up, how about we do it nine more times? <laughs> all right. That's all you follow the podcast on social media. Thanks so much, everybody. Good night, America. <laughs>